So welcome to hometown. We're going to give a tour. Follow us. So we're heading over to the computer where Michaela's going to put on the parts that she wants to print. So um, these are where you can add your parts into the machine box. <laughs> this is a lot like Tinkercad. How did they get that to go into one of the How did they um, there's a little flash drive right here that they'll put in the machines and then they'll program it to go in the sand. So we're going to machine five. So whenever we bring over the hard drive, putting this into the machine so we can start uh, making the part on here. So it's mixing right now and filling to NB. So once this is done, it'll just keep putting down little layers over top of it. And then once that one is done, it'll roll out that way, clean it, and then that one will go in this way. How much sand is used to fill the pieces? Like, I think they said like a train cart a week is used in all the machines. That's a lot of sand. You know how many grains of sand it is? No. <laughs> That's a lot. Like a lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. So, they use a vacuum and there's certain different tips so they don't ruin the parts. This is what we used to suck out all the sand out of the box. Once you wipe off as much sand as you can, we're yes. going to take these and go over to the air, oh, to the where, where we uh, use the air to it's clean okay. off the rest of the sand. So we're going over to, we'll go over to this one right here. They are wiping all the sand, the excess sand off on the different parts. And they're using the air pressure and some brushes to get the crevices and the main parts. And then as you can see, after it is clean, they're put on these uh, pallets. So these, you can see, they can get more on there, but sometimes they have to add extra foam depending on how fragile the part is. So they have the bottom base, then they put some wood and foam, and then they put the bricks on before they put the parts so they can keep stacking it up. They figured out that this is the safest way to do it in that the least amount of parts get broken during shipping with this technique. Any questions? Um, on average, how many pieces break during the shipping? Um, depends well, on the ride, I would say. Yeah, hopefully none, but sometimes there is some pieces that break during it. As you can see, they have a lot of wood and foam and pallets ready to, uh, to do be this prepared. because of how many pieces they have shipping out every day. This is like how tall they can get stacked. They put it so it doesn't have any pressure on it, but it is still like in there and can't move around. If you around. look through it, you can see how there's no, it's not touching. Any questions about how they ship it? Have they ever had like one stacked and then like the wood broke? Not that I know I of. don't think so. Hopefully not. My favorite part of giving the tour was giving them the chance to learn it from a kid's perspective and not an adult's perspective. My favorite part of the tour today was cleaning off the sand of the molds. I thought that was really neat because they're really fragile and it takes a soft touch to not break them. I just thought it was fun because it was cool to look at it and then like see before it was all sandy then after it was nice and clean. Something that we've been learning in school right now is um, we're doing Tinkercad and making 3D prints. And so I think that kind of contrasts with here too because you're doing 3D prints to make models of them. Well, in the manufacturing career, I wasn't really interested, but now that you show us more things about it, it, it has grown on me more. So I think it might uh, change my idea of what, what I want to do when I grow up. I might want to go into a different uh, job now since I've learned a lot more stuff about this. Uh, I'd say it has changed my perspective because like I had no idea what it would be like this. It's completely different and it seems pretty cool. Do you have a good time? Great. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs>